All right, I want to take a few minutes and walk you through a quick and brief introduction to one of the most powerful tools in Excel called Power Query. Now, this is a four-star advanced analytics tip. We're going to talk about how to connect, shape, transform, and load data from external sources into Excel using these Power Query tools. So in classic Microsoft fashion, you may see these tools named all sorts of different things, depending on the version of Excel that you're using. You might see Power Query, you might see Get Data, you may see Get and Transform, and it all means the same thing. I'm using Office 365 Pro Plus, and this is what I see in my Data tab. I've got a group of tools called Get and Transform Data, and a Get Data command off to the left. And what we're going to do in this demo is connect to a flat CSV file. Note that you can also connect to database sources or web APIs and so on and so forth. In this case, we're going to keep it simple. I've made this file available as part of the course. Basically, we're going to do a quick analysis of some Kickstarter campaign data. So once we point to the file, we'll see this query preview and then click edit to launch our query editor. And this will open as a separate workbook outside of our Excel worksheet environment. And you'll see a preview of your data here and all sorts of tools that we have to shape and filter and customize and transform this data before we load it into Excel. So this is like our command center for configuring this query or connection. Now keep in mind, there's no way I could even scratch the surface of all these tools within the scope of this particular demo, but I do have an entire course that goes in depth into these tools. It's the Power Query, Power Pivot, and DAX course. Now for the purposes of this introduction, keep in mind that there are a few important sections of this query editing window. You've got your query editing toolbar at the top with options to transform or add new columns and a window in the lower right called applied steps. Now these applied steps are absolute game changers because essentially what's going on here is that every time you make an adjustment or transformation, any operation that you apply to your table gets recorded as a new applied steps, exactly like steps get recorded in a VBA macro. Now, once you've transformed and shaped your data and you're ready to load it into Excel, there are two places where you can load it, either to a worksheet where it will live in rows and columns and cells, or to the data model where you can compress this data and store much, much more information, hundreds of millions of rows. And it's also where you can actually build relational models to create table relationships and connect or blend information from multiple sources. So to quickly summarize common use cases, number one, connecting to flat files or database sources, and then transforming or filtering that data before loading it into Excel for further analysis. Number two, creating a fully automated ETL process, which stands for extract, transform, and load that can be refreshed with one click as new data becomes available. Again, details are all covered in my Power Query, Power Pivot, and DAX course. So with that, let's jump into Excel. I'm going to walk you through one quick demo for how we can use Power Query to connect and transform an external CSV file. All right, so if you'd like to follow along, head to your table of contents and look for this Power Query demo in our purple analytics tips. And when you link out, all you'll see here is a blank sheet for now. Now to introduce this topic of Power Query, I've made a project file available to you called kickstarterprojects.csv. Feel free to download that to follow along or just sit back and watch the show. So I'm gonna to head to my data tab here. A couple ways I can grab a CSV file, either from this from text slash CSV button or in the get data dropdown, which shows me some of the other data sources as well. In this case, I'm gonna go into from file from text slash CSV. I'm gonna double click the Kickstarter project file that I've loaded to my desktop. So the first thing we'll see is a quick preview based on the first 200 rows of that file. I've got project IDs, names, categories, main categories, and then all sorts of information about when the project was launched, when the deadline is, how many backers, uh, how much money was pledged, and so on and so forth. Now, we're gonna wanna filter down this data, trim it down to just what we need, so we're gonna click the edit button to actually launch the query editor. And you'll see that it launches in a new window outside of the Excel spreadsheet environment. And this is where we're gonna do all of that data shaping and filtering and transforming before it gets loaded into Excel. 
And you'll notice it's already applied a few steps. It's identified the source from my desktop here. It's promoted the headers and it's detected some of the data types here and applied those data types automatically. So for the sake of demonstration, let's add a few more filters here. Um, perhaps we don't want all of the deadline data here. We've got projects going back to 2009. So let's apply a date filter and say only projects, get out of here, Adobe Reader, that are after, why don't we say 2014? So we can go to December 2014, select the 31st, press OK. We've added a new applied step to filter those rows, and we can sort that column ascending just like we would with any Excel table to see that now we're dealing with projects that only have deadlines going back to January 1st, 2015. Now, same story here, we can filter down by country. For now, let's just look at the US projects. There we go. And now the state, whether a campaign was successful or if it failed or was canceled, supply a filter there as well and only look at successful projects. Press OK. Now we could continue to go on and on. We could change data types here. We could remove extra columns. We've got some redundant ones in this case. But for the sake of demonstration, let's go ahead and move on to loading the data. I'm going to choose close and load two from the upper left. And this will show me my loading options. Now, if I didn't want to load this data to a worksheet and actually store those rows, those observations in rows and columns, what I could do is only create the connection and drop it into the data model. Now, note, you may not have access to the data model depending on the version of Excel that you're using. And in this case, I want to reserve the data model conversation for a different pro tip. So for now, we're going to use the table option and actually load this filter data that we created right here into our existing worksheet, the Power Query worksheet in cell A1. And when we press OK, we'll see our query pane pop up and it says, all right, we're loading some data from that Kickstarter project CSV. It loaded 41,097 rows and it dropped that data as a table right here in my Power Query tab. Now let's go ahead and close that pane. From here, we can work with this table just like any other. We can insert a pivot table, for instance, Let's drop this in a new sheet and tab over. And we can call this one Kickstarter Pivot, for instance. And here we've got our fields from that Kickstarter table. And we can work just like a normal pivot table here. Maybe we want to break down data by main category here on rows. And in this case, let's look at the amount pledged in US dollars. And just like any other pivot, we can change the number formats to currency. Could have done this in the query editor as well. And let's grab the state, the project state as filters. And remember, we sorted it or filtered it down to only show successful projects. So that's the only option we have here. Now that's pretty cool. We can now see how much money was pledged by category. See a lot of money in design, in games, in technology, which makes sense. But this isn't really what makes Power Query so powerful, we could have just loaded up that CSV and copied and pasted it into a tab. What makes Power Query so powerful is that if we now want to change some of the settings or features of our connection, maybe we don't want to filter down to only successful projects. Maybe we want to look at failed projects now instead. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to manually filter down the table that was dropped into our Power Query tab. Instead, we can go into data, queries and connections, and we can right click to edit that Kickstarter project query and check it out. This last step, this filtered row step is where we had filtered down to country equals US and the project state equal to successful. All we need to do is click this little gear icon to edit that step. And this second line here is the state filter. We click this ellipse, delete that filter and press OK. And it will refresh to bring those rows back in from the original CSV file. Now when we close and load, you'll see in our query pane that Kickstarter project query is refreshing itself. And what we should see is that more data comes in here. Instead of just 41,000, this should show a higher total because we're now including projects with different project states. And that's exactly what we see. Now we see 127,875 rows loaded to this table.
And just like you'd expect, we can close out our pane, head to our pivot, jump into pivot table tools and refresh. And now check it out. When we look at our state filter, now we don't only have successful options, we have failed, canceled, live, and suspended as well. And there you have it. So very, very quick, very surface level demo of some of these basic Power Query tools. Again, if you want that deep foundational knowledge, check out the Power Query, Power Pivot, and DAX course. I think you'll really enjoy it. But hopefully for now, that at least inspired you to play around with some of these more advanced tools and see how they might be able to revolutionize your workflow in Excel.